welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bring you information about your library and your community. And this is a part two with Nina Burbank, one of our children's librarians who's been with Peoria Public Library and working with children and parents and teachers for a quarter of a century now, so has plenty of wisdom to impart, plus a lot of knowledge about what's new to read out there. And that's the best thing is finding new books for your kids to enjoy. Hi, Nina. Hi. <laughs> I can't wait to dig back into this. Um, last week we were talking, we had just gotten to talking about books for older children and we were talking about the series, um, 39 Clues, Day of Doom, which had just come out. And then we had just started to talk about the Golden Door series and right. you were telling us about Emily Rhoda. So, and can right. you, maybe you want to pick up there again and summarize right. again a little okay. bit. The Silver Door is the second in the series of the Golden Door. Okay. And um, it is based into the Del Toro world again, where she has visited many, many a time with the dragons. And so it's picking up actually on some of the characters that were in her f series before. Okay. So the kids who like that series will probably like this series, and they want to probably pick up the first one, which is the Golden Door. Okay. Okay. So. And then move on to the Silver Door. All right. And what yeah. age group is this? This is um, this is basically going to be um, elementary, uh, okay. kind of like um, maybe late elementary, middle school, okay. somewhere around in there. Okay. I think they can all enjoy it. Um, the next two in series are, um, of course, American Girl Mysteries okay. with Julie, and Julie is from the '60s. Okay. So, kind of an interesting time. Mm -hmm. and this one is called Lost in the City. The what other one. What city is she in? That I don't know. <laughs> don't remember which city. Okay. No, don't remember which city. Um, Return to the Wild Seekers is um, one of the newer series that Erin Hunter has out. Mm -hmm. She has tons and tons and tons of series. This is about bears. This is River of Lost Bears. She has series out um, called Survivors, which is about dogs. Okay. Our original series was Warriors, which was cats. So she's got a lot of different animals, a lot of different series right now. Going on, yeah. So it's, you know, whatever animal you like, you there can, you go. You can find a series, yeah. And these books are like that same, like, third, fourth yes. Yeah, third, grade. fourth, fifth grade. Maybe even up to sixth on the okay. Seekers. On Seekers, yeah. yeah. I think American Girl maybe is a little younger. Yeah, I'm thinking third through fifth third on that Third through one. fifth, right. We're going to have some overlap just because okay. of reading abilities and okay. interest levels. And is there a Julie American Girl doll? Yes, I there is. I kind of lost track yes, of the there American is. Girl doll. Um, she's not the latest one anymore, but she is one of the newer ones. And she does have a regular series. Okay. And she's... This is showing her tie-dye here yeah. for the 60s, but you see I'm some of the say other she ones. could look like a child today, though. <laughs> yeah, but they do have some on the covers that you can tell it's really 60s, you okay. know, some of the outfits. So Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so, more okay. great stuff. All right, another one I want to talk about is um, Blue Balliette. I don't know if everyone remembers, um, she had Chasing Vermeer and the right oh, three. This yes. is one of her newer ones. It's a little different than that one. It's still a mystery. Okay. This one is set in Chicago. Oh, nice. And it's about a young girl, and this is what really caught me. Her father is a librarian. Ah, all right. And he disappears. And when he disappears, there's a break-in in their house, a very dangerous break-in, and they eventually have to go and live in a city shelter. Ah. So it's got the mystery, it's got books, it's got libraries, it's got a mystery of a missing father, it's got conditions in a city shelter, and how can we make that better. So it's got a lot of things going on in this, this little oh, book. Which... A lot of things to <laughs> think about and discuss. And... Yeah, it's, it's... But yeah. what a great thing to combine with a trip to Chicago, either reading yeah. before you go to Chicago or when you come back or on your trip. Or even if you want to talk social mm -hmm. issues with this kid. How sure. can we solve the homeless problem? Yeah, kind how of do you thing. do that? How do you do yeah, that? She does come up with a solution with that, and this is something that can be moved into the real world. Oh, so, all right. So you've got some really thoughtful things going on here. Plus, of course, the library angle, which, which yeah, I Yeah, I like that library <laughs> angle. Okay. <laughs> okay, the other book, I, I think I brought it over. Let's see, that's Hold Fast. This is the, yeah, that's Hold Fast. This one right here is The Terrible Thing That Happened to Barnaby Brockett. Okay. Now, this one has been likened to some, the parents in this one have been likened to some of, uh, some of the parents in Roald Dahl. You know how some of the okay. adults in Roald Dahl are really wicked and mean and horrible. Okay. Um, Barnaby Brockett's parents have a, a thing about being normal. It's their, their bread and butter. They have to be normal. They're, 
you know, sort of, they just can't be anything but normal. And when Barney Brockett is born, he has an unusual ability. He floats. Oh, okay. <laughs> and to keep him to earth, to make him look normal, he wears a backpack with sand in it mm. to keep him down. And one day his mother freaks out entirely, cuts a slit in the backpack, and he floats away. And that is the terrible thing that happens to Barnaby Brockett. So he's floating away, and he meets encounters. His, this whole rest of the book is then about his journey, okay. how he meets different people, people who help him, people who exploit him, you know, and how he actually finds out mm -hmm. who he is and what he is and what his purpose is in this world. Ah, okay. So a journey, shall okay. we say. A journey, a journey book. Okay. Yes. And, you know, there's plenty of journey books, but this one, you know, floating? Yeah, that's uh, a new one. That's a new one, okay. Um, the next ones I want to talk about are um, two fractured fairy tales. Oh, love fractured fairy tales. I do tales. too. I adore them. The first one is Rump, the true story of Rumpelstiltskin. And this is supposed to be a behind the scenes. This is about 12-year-old Rump. <laughs> and supposedly your name is who you are in fairy tale world here. And so he gets a lot of ribbing. I thought it was interesting that his best friend is Red Riding Hood. Ah, okay. And what happens is he finds out that one of his talents is weaving, weaving magic. And um, he also finds himself in trouble because as he uses the magic, as his friend says, you know, magic's going to get you into trouble. Mm -hmm. And it does. He weaves himself into a curse and has to go on a quest to break the spell. Okay. So he's going, going to find a lot of the traditional, you know, poison, apples, and different <laughs> things as he goes along and mm -hmm. has to break the spell. So that's kind of a fun one. Frogged is based on the Frog Prince, ah, as you might okay. with a little bit of a twist. And I think Disney may have done this twist, but he's doing it here in a different, she's doing it here in a different way. This is Vivian Van Velt, who some kids are probably familiar with, as doing a lot of fairy tale stuff. And um, in this one, Princess Imogene finds out to her horror that kissing the frog turns her into a frog. Ah. Yes. Yes. So she's trying to find a way to break the spell, or will she be a frog forever? Yeah. Okay. And is that a bad thing or a good thing? Yeah. Who can say? <laughs> well, a little bit like Shrek when the princess is actually an ogre. Yes. So yes. I don't know if Disney did a frog girl that turned into a frog, but one way or another, it's a great concept. Mm hmm. So, yeah, so we've got a couple of really fun books. And yeah, that's kind mm -hmm. of the, um, Cartboy and the Time Capsule is supposedly in the tradition of the Wimpy Kid series. Oh, okay. I read a little bit of this one. Um, yes, is indeed in a journal, journal way. He's got the journal entries. Um, his problem is his father is really a history buff, and he wants him to do good in history, and Cartboy is just not doing very well in history. And, and why is he called Cart Boy? Cart Boy has to do with the fact that his father, instead of giving him a backpack, gives him one of those carts that you pull around for groceries. Oh, okay. You know, to put his stuff in to go to school, so people start calling him Cart Boy. Cart Boy, yes. Okay. So he's kind of like the underdog, like, you know, mm -hmm. the character in the Wimpy Book, Wimpy Kid series. So, mm -hmm. And he's in middle school, too, and so it's kind of a, a setup for that. And so I don't know if it's the next thing or not. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> style of writing. So this yes. is about, you know, this is about middle school kid boys will probably enjoy this one, I think. Okay, okay. Um, the next ones I'm going to talk about are YA. Okay. These are two dystopias, and dystopias are, of course, the opposite of utopia, so we're talking mm -hmm. bad news here. Yes. Um, the first one is a concept that I find intriguing. Um, you know, we all know about Katrina and some of the hurricanes that have visited mm -hmm. the Gulf Coast recently. Mm -hmm. This is about what would happen if we kept escalating that. We kept getting more horrific hurricanes over and over and over in the Gulf Coast, which was then hit by a plague. And then the United States decided to wall it off and just write it out. Well, what, yeah, walk away. Walk mm -hmm. away. So what happens to the people that are there that are stuck there? You know, and so this is mm -hmm. about Finn, who lives there and who somehow becomes possessed of an infant, somebody's infant, that she's trying to get to a better life on the other side of the wall. Yeah. And a scientist named Daniel, who came down to investigate and now is trying to get back out. So this okay. is their adventure, trying to get out of this place alive. Okay. okay. So very much, it, you know... And I'm not sure why so many YA novels right now are directed at this dystopian... Thing, I know, I think it started with Hunger Well, actually, I, it started before Hunger Games. Yeah, I mean, it's been going it on for a while. For a while, but, but uh, yeah, and I 
read these sometimes just to keep up on what the trends are, you know, and, and um, they all kind of have a similar theme. And sometimes I wonder if it isn't a coping mechanism. I think it might be. For kids that age to think through what would you do? Because if you can think through what you can do, maybe you can are a well, little bit Well, if you can think of what prepared. you can do in the most impossible situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can think of what you can do in an impossible situation, you can think of what you can do with an ordinary situation. Right. And of course, our world today, anything seems like it can happen at any time. And, right. and uh, so I'm not sure why kids are so attracted to the dystopian future books and zombies and all the rest of it. But <laughs> That is what they're reading now, and some of these books are, are, you know, they're good, and some of them have some good thoughts in them. So your next one is? Breaking Point, also a dystopia. This is a sequel to Article 5, for those of uh, you who know Article 5, Brian. I read that one. Um, it continues the story of Ember and Chase in a world where personal freedom is a thing of the past. Mm. The government has fallen. The new government um, has become more of a dictatorship. A constitution is gone. Um, soldiers have replaced police. Um, there is now something called the moral statutes instead of the Constitution. And breaking anything, breaking any of the statutes, doing anything bad, gets you in jail and prison. No trial, nothing. You're just gone. I um, mean, you never come back. So Ember and Chase have faked their deaths in Article 5, and this is what happens after. Okay. This is, um, there has been, I believe, an assassin who's been killing off soldiers in this new world. And for some reason, they think Ember is the one who did it. Oh. So she is on the most wanted list and trying to figure out what she needs to do about mm. that. Does she just need to hide forever? Does she need to fight back? Um, how are they going to resolve this issue? Okay. So. Is this uh, going to be a trilogy, do you know? I'm thinking they're going to go a little bit further than they usually do. Okay. okay. <laughs> is Orleans a... A standalone? That, that one has, uh, has not appeared to be going to have a sequel yet. Okay. So okay. you never know, though. Yeah. Well, I know everyone's anxiously awaiting the sequel of Divergent and Insurgent, which is already being made into a movie, even though the third book hasn't right. been released. And that, once again, like Hunger Games, I think, is a huge success. And I oh, actually yeah. did, did read those, and those take place in Chicago. And although they're not new, when the sequel comes out, it will be new. But another series, another dystopian, you know, right. YA that actually many adults might in, enjoy. Yeah, I think some of the mm -hmm. YA are mm -hmm. appropriate for adults. And I should, yeah. we should point out that we do have a new YA for adults book club. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, that is meeting at Lakeview and Lakeview Branch, and details are on the website. But they have picked their books for the year, and that that club is mostly aimed at twenty and thirty somethings who do in, still enjoy reading. YA literature. And if that sounds silly, we should point out that Hunger Games, Harry Potter were both considered YA and all the adults read them. So, and, and they can be kind of nice. It's, they're complex stories. Mm -hmm. They may be just, or, uh, of course, Harry Potter books are not short. They're this thick. But <laughs> yeah. a lot of these are a little shorter. So if you don't have a lot of time to read, it's a book you can get mm -hmm. into and get through and be done with. So, yeah. Um. That's all I have new book-wise. All right. But then we need to talk about teachers. We've talked about parents and how we have all these resources, the library for parents. We talked last week about our parenting collection that's actually in the children's area so parents can access it, and so can children, that talks about our various topics. And we talked about how the staff's always available to help you find books. Right on appropriate levels for your child or appropriate subjects so that you can continue to get them interested in reading. But teachers are another big facet of this. Right, right. We and because we live in a spread out metropolitan area and we have, um, we even have the issue of the school district lines don't match the library district lines, right. which always confuses people. The library Peoria Public Library is a metropolitan library that grows with the city boundaries. So as the city boundaries grow, we grow. Every time we annex something north, those people become part of Peoria Public right. Library. However, District 150 is locked in. And so if you're in District 150, you're going to be eligible for a Peoria Public Library card. But guess what? A whole bunch of people who go to school in Dunlap are in the Dunlap district, but in the Peoria Library District. 
I think it's like 80% of the students in Dunlap schools are eligible for Peoria Public Library card because they live in the city of Peoria. <laughs> this, is, this was hard for us to explain all through our campaign that we did our buildings. Right. And it continues to be difficult. People say, well, why are you serving people in Dunlap? Well, we're not. They're just in a different school district, even though they have a Peoria right. address. But to make that all complicated, you have teachers from all over right. who come and teach in Peoria schools. And while they are eligible for library cards where they live, their library card is not going to work on our databases unless they're in our buildings. Right. And, and that, our yeah. databases are such a huge portion. Our online resources are such a huge portion of what we offer now. But we came up with a solution for teachers. The teacher card. The teacher card, yes. Yes, the teacher card has saved. And I've when we've had tours in and we've had teachers that... Um, want to check out something and they don't have a period card and they want to know about it, we say get a teacher card right now because <laughs> mm -hmm. we will do them on the spot while you're on your yes. tour. Yes. So um, basically they just need to show us that they work at a place. Yeah. So if they have a school ID on them or they have a pay stub or they have a letter from their principal or their superintendent, we give them a card, you know? Yeah. They just need to work um, at either a Peoria or a Dunlap school, because we accept the Dunlap school ones too. Simply because okay. we have, like you said, so many yeah, kids. So from many Peoria. kids. So if you work at a Dunlap or a Peoria school, you can apply. Right. And it doesn't matter whether it's District 150, District 323, a private, a parochial, or a daycare. We will give you a card. Yeah. <laughs> we okay. want you to come in and use the, the materials. And that's probably important to know too, the daycare, because mm -hmm. the daycares Right. often go need a lot of books for their story times and things. And it's, okay. it's valid for like a whole year. It runs from August 1st through July 31st. Okay. So, and they can have um, a six week checkout period. No renewals, I'm afraid. Yeah. That's okay. But you get six weeks um, and I think it's 40 books. So you can do something on a subject. Okay. Not you can come and have our staff help you and mm -hmm. get all the books on if you, know, you want to call ahead, ecology or yeah if you want to call ahead mm -hmm. and say you know I'm a teacher and I need some help putting some stuff together we can do that for you that's not a problem mm -hmm. just give us a little lead time okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't call that morning <laughs> yeah don't call it that morning but you know like a afternoon. few days ahead mm -hmm. and let us know mm -hmm. and we can pull some stuff for you and and then you can check it out and take it to your classroom for six weeks mm-hmm Yep. Okay. Um, what else is the teacher card good for? Um, one of the things we um, have is that it's good for um, books, of course. Mm -hmm. You can also get DVDs on certain subjects. Um, one of the things you really can't get, and I hate to say it, but uh, it's kind of limited to the age group that you're working with. Right. So I'm sorry, so no bestsellers. Yeah, yeah, you can't come in and check out bestsellers. You can't come in and check out the hot new movies you're checking out, this is for your classroom. So right, right. if you live in West Peoria, you're not eligible for a library card, sorry, you still are going to have to buy one if you want those things or pay the, pay the fee. Right. But you can get a um, library card that will let you check out all the fourth grade books on ecology or something. Mm -hmm. you know, and some of that. the adult books too. And, and, and a lot of the, we do have documentaries or music, mm -hmm. right. that kind of thing that you can check out. So yeah, but you get the card right away, right on the spot. Mm -hmm. So you don't have yeah. to wait. If no you come waiting. in for a tour, just tell them you want it. Mm -hmm. We work on it, get it done, give it to you before you leave. <laughs> yeah, so it's ready to go. Right. Um, I wanted to point out, we do have some databases that would be very, very, very helpful for teachers and yes. students. Yes. Um, if you're getting into any kind of local history, we've got it. I mm -hmm. mean, if you're, we had some students in, some six, I think it was sixth grade students in, that um, were doing history of Peoria, different things in Peoria. We've mm -hmm. got that. Mm -hmm. Come down and visit us. We can help you. Mm -hmm. um, we have Britannica online. That's Which is wonderful. It's a lovely resource. Um, What's, what, I think people hear that, oh, Britannica online, big deal, I could Google it. But when we have these databases we pay for, the thing people need to understand is that these are verified resources. You're going to get your one right answer. And yes, these there used to be a lot of rules about, oh, you can't use online resources in a research paper. But this is the same thing as back in the day when you went to the library and got the encyclopedia and sat and took notes. Only the better. difference is, <laughs> yeah, the difference is that now you can actually have an account. Some places call it a backpack 
where as you do your research and find things, you throw it a in cloud, your work, yeah, you they work, all throw have it in different your workspace. Names. You throw it in the workspace and it's all right there. And so you can get to it from anywhere. Right. And if you want to put it on your flash, because it has, you can put in video, you mm -hmm. can put in audio, pictures. Yeah, things for PowerPoints. So mm -hmm. many of the school children are required to do a PowerPoint. This for is a project the place. and not only that, but they do the citations for you, which yeah. is like super cool. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to figure it out. It's just here's what you put for your citation. Yeah, so that's a done. wonderful resource. Mm -hmm. um, another one we have that is absolutely amazing, I have been playing with this one a lot, is called ABC Clio, and it's mm -hmm. history. Yes. And so it's... I wish it had a better title. I know it doesn't tell what it is. Yeah. But it's like they have it broken down by... Um, time mm -hmm. they have it broken down like there's african-american ones and there's like a latino american you can look in that mm -hmm. so it's got in the daily life so if you want to know what happened in a certain epoch that you mm -hmm. know how they lived you can do that i mean mm -hmm. there are some really wonderful resources in that one um, another one i really want to point out before we uh, lose any time is novelist it's called novelist plus k-12 and it's a way that you can find books like if you liked a particular book Mm -hmm. You can put that in and it'll find other ones like it. Yeah, so if you liked Orleans. Yes, you could put that in. You and could it put that in. And say, like this, and it will find it for you. But what I really like and what they've added recently is Common Core section. So okay. if you're a teacher and you want to have some resources for your Common Core, just go there, click on it, and it'll give you some resources, some books, some materials, whatever. Mm -hmm. Also, there are um, Lexile reading levels, so you can click on that give you those too. Okay, now, I'm not a teacher or a librarian, so I'm going to ask for definitions here. Lexile. Lexile has been around for a long time, and it's a way to um, understand uh, where it is on the level. Is this a fourth grade reading level? Is this a eighth grade reading level? Is this a first grade reading level? So this is how they do levels. You know, who is this appropriate for, reading-wise, okay. not okay. content-wise. That's not that's Kind of not, like what we talked about last week when we had the the circles with the one, two, three, it mm -hmm. tells you. Okay. Right. right. Okay. Common Core, I'm a little shady on, but I know that that's the big thing right now. It's what's taken over on education. Everybody's talking Common Core. So everybody's getting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, that kind of focuses on um, some basic principles that you want to teach across your, your curriculum and what, what those things are. And I think it has to do with relating, you know, one subject to another. You might be reading, but then you yeah. work in math and I think you're right. that kind of yeah. thing. So yeah, that's that's something mm -hmm. that's really wonderful. So check out Novelist Plus K through eight. We have like three different novelists. So yeah. <laughs> Novelist Plus K through eight is the one you want to check out because that's got the kid books in it and it's got the extras. Okay, okay. So that's something really wonderful. Um, another one I want to point out, Mango. Yes, mango, mango is languages. so much fun. Mango language. Um, a lot of kids like to go in there and learn pirate. Yeah, speaking pirate is good. You never know when you might need pirate. There's a lot of regular languages, but pirate is fun. So you can do mm -hmm. Spanish, French, Croatian, Serbian. I mean, it, mm -hmm. all the Asian languages, they're all in there. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn a new language, this is a place to look. But the other thing that one is so great for is for our ESL, which means English as a second language, yeah. if you're not familiar with that. If you have someone who uh, English is not their first language, Mango can also be used the other direction. And, of course, Peoria is such a headquarters for people coming in for Caterpillar and its right. associated businesses and just people traveling. It's, it's a great thing to be able to have that then once you get here. I've also heard that our story times are very, very popular for parents, moms, and kids who are trying to learn. Right. They're know. doing a lot of immersion with mm -hmm. their children mm -hmm. to learn English. And I heard a story about parents going around to all the branches, to all the different story times, so they can continue to have that interaction, hear the stories, hear the, hear the language right. spoken the way we speak it, right. which is not the way you probably are going to learn it, you know. Just no. going through a database, yeah. <laughs> American English is a little different. Yes, but the other way to learn language, you know, is is on our tumble books, and right. I don't know if you've played with that. We oh yeah yeah tumble books you can do in Spanish and French, and I think, oddly enough, Russian was another one. I think it was, and I don't remember what the other languages were. I but think that's it. 
But you're the librarian. Tell us about Tumble Books. Oh, I love Tumble Books. Tumble Books is so much fun. When we first got it, it was really simple. I mean, mm -hmm. we were like, oh, yeah, it reads the story to you. But they have added so much to it now. Nice. Um, Tumble Books, just plain Tumble Book Library, has added in games and puzzles and mm -hmm. all kinds of fun things that the kids can do after they listen to the book. Yes. And then we also have, Tumble Books has also added in some other modules into mm -hmm. it, separate from the Tumble Books library that they had originally. They have um, Tumble Book Cloud for all the kids. They have Tumble Book Cloud Junior, and they have <laughs> Tumble Book Cloud Audio. So they have a lot of fun things going on, um, like Tumble Book Audio, just listening. Yeah, all so, kinds of ways to do that. And we should point out that in the early days, you could only do it on the computer, but I know that they have now made they have some mobile. iPad. Yeah, they've made iPad and, compatible. Um, that was the big problem, of course, was between the Mac and the PC platforms, but they now do have the iPod or iPad compatible. And more and more stories books. each day are getting, mm -hmm. trans, you know, kind of translated. I translated guess. over to the other so that you can hear them, which is a wonderful thing because if you, you know, if, if you can get on the Internet and you've got your tablet with you, you can let your kid be reading a book and then playing a game. And there's so many things that help with learning to read where they highlight the words, you can turn the sound right. off. You can adjust that program to where your child is at. Right. And um, we are almost out of time. Is there any other one quick thing um, you want to I'd like to, to point out for teachers, Brain Fuse. Brain Fuse, yes, Brain, Brain Fuse. Brain Fuse is wonderful. Go and dive in. There are live tutors on Brain Fuse. There's that section, but there's also sections that have like flashcards and games mm -hmm. for practice and also tests. And, and kids can collaborate online too. Oh, so. yes. Yeah. Well, we'd like to collaborate with you, and Peoria Public Library is here as a resource for parents and teachers all across our community. And whether it's using our databases from your classroom at our home, coming in for a tour, asking librarians to help you find a book or finding them on your own with our um, things like Novelist, uh, using Tumble Books, all those are available as a resource to help our community stay educated and get that edge and that early education and get those kids out there and learning and being library lovers. So we'll see you next week on Information Please. Mm -hmm.